Oh, man. Okay. I need a breather. Just give me a second. I think I'm ready. Hey, everyone. It's Alex, the real Mr. Robinson. And yesterday, you may have heard, maybe you've heard, that the new teaser for Star Wars The Force Awakens debuted during... Star Wars celebration over at Anaheim, which sadly I haven't been able to go to. Just didn't get tickets and I'm busy with other stuff. But luckily the trailer made it online, not as a leak, but officially. So luckily we don't have to wait till Age of Ultron to see it. So how do I feel about this one? Well, I love this one more than the first one because once again, it's a teaser. It shows us a little more without really giving anything away. And this one is probably the most emotional teaser for a movie I've ever seen. Emotional in the sense that I'm filled with joy. When the trailer starts, you see this desert land with a speeder speeding in the background. And then in the foreground, you see an X-Wing, a crashed X-Wing. And then way in the background, you see a crashed Star Destroyer. Then we hear voiceover of someone saying, the force is strong in my family. And we cut to the burnt shell of Darth Vader's helmet as we hear his iconic breathing. And the voiceover says, my father has it. And then right at that point, we can assume that it's Luke Skywalker. And then I won't say anything else that happens after that, except for the end of the trailer. But basically, this trailer just filled me with so much joy. Like, I really almost cry. I really, no, I didn't almost cry. I did cry because... Like, it's just, it's the John Williams score, the imagery, the iconic sound effects that have stood the test of time for almost 40 years. It feels like Star Wars again. And to top it off, the end of the teaser is like seeing two friends that we've known for a long time. We see Han Solo, an older Han Solo, and Chewbacca. They're inside the Millennium Falcon, and we hear Han say, Chewie home and then Chewbacca is it just like filled me with so much joy I mean this feels like Star Wars um I mean it can't be worse than the Phantom Menace like I hope this is not the Phantom Menace effect all over again where we get a super cool trailer we see the movie and then we're just like shit but I think I have confidence in this one one it actually feels like Star Wars where the Looking back at the Phantom Menace trailers, they didn't really feel like Star Wars. And when you think about it, none of the prequels, except for uh, the second half of Revenge of the Sith, never really quite felt like Star Wars. It was more the Clone Wars animated series, both animated series, that really got the job done. But this actually feels like Star Wars. It's like, okay, J.J. Abrams, it looks like he's got it right. I mean, his Star Trek movies were... Pretty much Star Wars movies, but in the Star Trek universe. And for anyone who still wants to argue that it's not going to be good because he screwed up with Star Trek Into Darkness, that was Robert Ortsey and Alex Kurtzman's fault. So if you want to blame anyone for the bad shit in Star Trek Into Darkness, blame those two. Because J.J. Abrams did as best he could with a script that starts good and then just goes to shit. Um, I still like the movie, but I admit it's flawed. But I'm excited to see this. I mean... Once Age of Ultron's out of the picture, this is my most anticipated movie of the year. Um, I'm going to leave a link to the trailer down below so you can check it out for yourselves because uh, it's just best you watch the trailer than me having to explain it. But I just wanted to share my personal thoughts on the trailer and I wanted to make an announcement because uh, Star Wars is such a phenomenon. It is... I don't think there's any film franchise out there that is as talked about is as influential or as celebrated as Star Wars. Some people could make an argument that Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe are better franchises. I mean, they're great, don't get me wrong, but think, ask yourself this. Are they as influential as Star Wars? Are they as talked about? Are they as celebrated as Star Wars is? No. I mean, they are, they are celebrated and influential in their own ways, but not Nowhere on the level of Star Wars. And in fact, if Star Wars hadn't existed, these film franchises would never be. I guarantee that. Because Star Wars is such a phenomenon, because we have a new movie coming out at the end of the year, 
I think it's time I review the six live action movies. I'll be reviewing the movies in chronological order. That means I have to start with the prequels and then work my way to the original trilogy. And here's how it's going to work. May is the month where a Star Wars movie is traditionally released, at least the live action ones. So in the first three Wednesdays of May, I will be reviewing Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. Once we get into December, I will be reviewing the original trilogy in the first three Wednesdays of December. So Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. With my review for Return of the Jedi landing on the Wednesday before The Force Awakens is released. I won't review the animated Clone Wars movie or anything else because I feel like those are reviews in of themselves. So that's my announcement. My review for Phantom Menace will come out May 6th, and I hope you guys enjoy that. But until that time comes, leave a comment and tell me what you thought of the new Star Wars teaser, if you've seen it. Like, subscribe, go check out my video blog channel. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, go like me on Facebook. And this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one, and may the Force be with you. Always.